Welcome to Red Zone and Lab Podcast with Dion Deuce Blackney. I am Agent Aya Blackney, his daughter. Thank you for tuning in in today's episode. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Red Zone and the Lab, and don't forget to hit the notification button. Thank you. One beat, one sound, one heart, one love. I'm Christian Miles, native Washingtonian and real estate agent servicing the Washington metropolitan area. I started my career as an investor and later transitioned to the residential side. I really wanted to leave the investor side because I wanted to connect with people. Building relationships is important to me. I understand the buying and selling process can be challenging. I get it. I've been there. I'm a mom, wife, friend, and neighbor. I absolutely love helping families and connecting with people. Going through the home buying and selling process is stressful enough. When working with me, I make it fun. As a realtor, I think it's important to be able to connect with you. Every detail is important no matter how small. Let me take care of the heavy lifting while you focus on the joys of finding a new home. Something I live by, people may not remember what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. With me, it's an experience. Welcome back to Red Zone in the Lab with Deuce. Welcome back. To Red Zone in the Lab podcast. This is Dion Deuce Blackney. And today is day four of the NFL 2022 free agency. Today is day two of the official uh, free agency period. Today, maybe, you know, yesterday evening, a lot of teams are beginning to have their introductory press conference with their, their big signings most of the time, usually just the big signings. Some of the small uh, second wave signings, they really they usually don't have press conferences for. But we, we, we are here today to discuss uh, the remaining free agents. Um, I have Joe Wilson coming on today to kind of give us his top five free agents and where he think they should be. Also have John Matthews coming in to give us his top five free agents is for um, free agents for the day. So um, just listen up, please, please um, subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. We got some things coming up um, in the near future. We would like for you to, to uh, subscribe, turn on the notifications so you can stay in the loop. Um, we appreciate you for listening to Red Zone and the Lad. So let's get to it. There's a lot of bad stigma about shopping for a used car. Well, come visit us at iCargo Motors. We'll take care of you. We'll ensure that your experience is not only seamless and efficient, but also satisfying. Because at iCargo Motors, we believe that the best form of currency is integrity. Welcome back to Red Zone in the Lab with Deuce. This is Red Zone. Welcome back. It's Red Zone in the Lab podcast. This is Dion Deuce Blackney. And today, like we talked about, we're going to go over our top five available free agents and the best spot for them. So I got my brother in here today, Joe Wilson, to go over his top five. What's going on today? Yes, sir. What's going on, bro? How you feeling? How you feeling? Good. Chilling, man. Hanging in there, man. So let's get to it. So your top five. First man you got up is Honey Badger. Why Honey Badger? Well, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm an impartial Cowboys fan. Okay, but that's still one of the top safeties out there. You know, with all these, it's a passing league now. So if you can't rush the quarterback and defend the pass, you're pretty much done. That's still a top talent out there to, to be we yet. He's still one of the top three safeties in the league right now. What's your best landing spot for him? Unless you're going to be biased. Unless you're going to be biased. <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm I'm be both. I'm going to be biased. The best land is bad is Dallas. Okay. But I would like to see him go to uh, Sandy, uh the Chargers, man. Okay. They stacking Ooh, up over there. Man, with Derwin James, that would be tough. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Nice, Honey Badger. Derwin James in the box. Honey Badge over top, single high. Mm-hmm. That's tough, especially with those DNs they just picked up. They already yeah. got both suits. Now they got Mac. Yeah, they looking good, man. So let's go with Allen Robinson, your number two um, available free agent. Last year he had. Last year he he played. You know he got hurt in the beginning of the year. 
I mean, I think he probably did that on purpose. He ain't want to be there. He was playing on the franchise tag. You know what I'm saying? But the year before that, he had 102 catches, uh, 1,250 yards. He averaged 12 with six touchdowns. What would you think the best spot for him this year since he's finally uh, uh, a free agent? The best spot? Allen Robinson, and again, this is in part, I would like to see him come to the commanders. Him and McClure, Mm-hmm. they need that number two receiver. Yeah, they tried to get him uh, last. Well, they was rumored to be one of his, um, you know, one of their prime targets uh, last year, you know, outside of – that's why they kind of went to number two, which was um, Samuels. But, but yeah, man, my, yeah, somebody that can – Stretch the field, get down the field, and um, and uh, I hate to say it, but they got Carson Wentz. He'll he he a bit of an upgrade from Heineke, but he can definitely get them the ball. Yeah, and and he's good in the, in the middle of the field too. You know, on on them under routes. You know, on that's, them that's a good thing. That's good with um with Allen Robinson. So, uh, f- from my point of view, the most impactful player. Uh, other than um, Marcus Williams that went to the Ravens, is Bobby Wagner. I think um, this guy can make an impact on any team that he's going to, but I think where he's in a position to go to a, a, a playoff team, a possible contender. So what about Bobby Magler that Bobby Wagner that interests you the most to put him number three on, on your list? Well, it, well, I always like Bobby Wagner for the simple fact he's a three-down linebacker. Mm-hmm. He don't come out. He play the run and the pass. Those, you get, those guys are rare in the NFL right now. Mm-hmm. And like you said, he can impact any team that he step on, even though he's up there a little bit in age now. But mm-hmm. the man just had over 100 tackles last year. Yeah, 170 so it, to be exact. So if yeah. you can get your middle linebacker to be still that productive at that age, it benefits any team in the NFL right now. Yeah, and he's trending. He had 133 tackles over the last six years. And this is a guy that can still make an impact. I think Seattle did what they did because they knew they were going into a rebuilding mode. Um, I think they are looking out for him exactly um, to go out there and try to get with um, a contending team. Yeah, they try to say he on a decline the last couple of years. Well, if that's a decline, yeah. I'll take that over, over a bunch of starters right now. Yeah, but exactly. Young guys. Exactly. But again, guess what, bro? I'm visioning Michael Parsons and Bobby mm-hmm. Wagner for me. Yeah, I think that'd be good. I think he he brings that that leadership mentality. Um, a lot of the players, especially def- defensive players, look up to him. But it'll make the defense a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bradley Bozeman, number four on your list. I was kind of surprised you added him. Um, uh, I honestly didn't know. Who he who he was, so I kind of did some research on him. But he looks like he's one of the top centers. He's actually the top center that's still out there now. And I'm kind of confused of why the Ravens, um, uh, not, not 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 yeah, the Ravens let him go. Um, but I think that's a I think they should try to re-sign him to kind of show up that offensive line. But why you choose Bradley Bozeman? I didn't know who he was before we do until about six games into the season. I started watching the Ravens more. Mm-hmm. And you got to figure that run game that they had, he was the catalyst. Your center mm-hmm. is the catalyst for most of your play, and he played really well. And this, when I seen his name pop up on the free agency market, like you said, that was a shock to me that Baltimore was going to even let him test the market. Right. He's still so young. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that is a premium. Yeah, and they need him, especially with Lamar. And I know they just got – um Morgan Moses to play at the right tackle, right tackle position to kind of show that up. But they need all those good guys because they stacking up like just like the Chargers, they stacking up on defense too. Um, but they need to bring some people in for that offense. And so Jarvis Landry is a guy, and he's a guy that I would like for the commanders to kind of go out there. But he's right now, you know, he's best friends with OBJ. You know, OBJ went to a Super Bowl contender because I'm quite sure that's right. what Jarvis Landry is looking for right now. So when you think about Jarvis Landry as being number five on your list, what team do you think he will make the most impact? San Francisco. Okay. San Francisco. I, I see him in San Francisco because, you, I mean, right now I, I, we all love Debo, but mm-hmm. after that, what do you have? Mm-hmm. You have nothing else out of Debo. They need to get that man so that will give him more space because now you got a deep threat out there. Mm-hmm. And somebody that's really that's able to get open, um, he can you know, step right in. 
Yep, he can step right in. He can get open. Um, he can get, like you said, he can get down the field. He's very reliable. He has great hands, and he's a good locker room guy. A lot of the guys look up to him. Um, so I think a lot of um, Debo, Sma- Debo Samuel came kind of came out of nowhere last year um, from the middle of the year when they kind of switched up his role. But I think over the offseason, more teams are going to have, you know, kind of keen on, on him, keen in on him a little bit more. So they, they need someone else to kind of take a lot of that pressure off of him because you don't want to, I mean, <laughs> all in the, in, the, in, the, in the NFC Championship, you in the NFC Championship game, you know, after he got hurt, you know, he was only coming in on like third down plays you right. know, because he was playing hurt. You know what I'm saying? But when he was out, they looked lost. So hopefully – um, they can be able to add to that arsenal. And I think – now, I agree with you. Other than the commanders, I think that would be a good landing spot for Yeah, John because Brown. once once the once the league get tape on you, like you said, that was his breakout year. But now everybody got that tape on you. It's not going to be as easy as it was. Like, yeah, exactly. You exactly. that field. Exactly. And they lost most of it. Yep, they did. He went to um, – to my to, yeah, yeah to Miami to, with 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 uh with a new coach I forgot his name but he seems like he's gonna be a character <laughs> <laughs> more <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah he seems like he's gonna be a character but you know that may be what they need though oh yeah they definitely need something down there I don't know what yeah. it is but identity. they need something yeah <laughs> <Our> identity <laughs> yeah man um so just just uh so that's your top five um I appreciate you coming on bro I know you got work I get to get there you know I know you at work. You know, yeah. um, getting it in, man. So I really do appreciate you coming on the pod to kind of give us your top five. Um, but just real quick, the the Cowboys just released Leo Collins. Leo Collins, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, so how do you just 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 a quick take on what's going down there? Um, not to really get too much into it, but what's kind of your impression of what's going down there in Dallas? Going on down there in Dallas, man. They messed that salary cap up so bad. They messed that up. Pay. They they started it started with the Zeke contract. Yeah, they killed themselves in salary cap. Now they're trying to justify, it. and you let you losing players that you shouldn't be losing. Mm-hmm. Now, Lyle Collins, I do understand he hasn't played that much in the last mm-hmm. two or three years. He hasn't played that much, so his contract is is a killer. Now mm-hmm. releasing him, I think we should have got we should have took that New England deal, another fifth round or fourth or fifth round pick. But if you couldn't get that. It's better off to let him go now, and because he didn't play last year, we did pretty well. We might as well move on from there and go forward. Yeah, I think I, that's I, the, I see that. that's the same case with Connor Williams. I think that's another reason why y'all let him go in free agency too. Because I mean, I mean, not that he didn't play, but he actually got benched through. You know, he got benched he, for a part of no the season. strength, yeah, no he, upper body strength. Anytime yeah. you see him on that field, he was just getting bull rushed. Yeah, Every his, time his face looked like he's not strong, too. Just looking <laughs> at his face. But yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on. Um, Red on the Lad podcast, Joe. I th- appreciate you, bro. Uh, look forward to having you on again anytime, bro. Anytime, I appreciate that. That's Red on the Lad podcast. One beat, one sound, one hop, one love. One love. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Just coming to you all, just wanted to share these amazing, amazing time of products with you all that has helped me drop 60 pounds over. It. A year and a half. So look, I'm going to start out with our flagship product, which is our Facia Detox Tea. When I tell you what's amazing, it's going to clean out your upper and your lower intestines. And also, Facia stands for empty in Spanish. That's the first part. Now we have Violate 30, which is vitamin and liquid energy for 30 days. Now once you detox, it's going to take out good and bad. So this right here is going to put everything good back in your body, all the nutrients that you need. Now this here is a flare. The flare will definitely get you there. It has no caffeine, no sugars. You will not have jitters. It's all natural, all natural, and it gives you great energy. Last but not least, we have our CBD infused coffee, Caprice, Colombian blend, It helps keep you calm, does not have any caffeine or sugars, it's all natural. Chaga mushrooms and Garcinia gambodia, which is good for memory. So if you want to try any of these amazing products, all you have to do is reach out to me. You can reach me on Facebook at Van Thomas or Instagram at Van underscore the detox man. 
If you want to reach out, just hit me. I'll gladly get back to you. Peace. Welcome back to Red Zone in the Lab with Deuce. Welcome back to Red Zone in the Lab podcast. This is Dion Deuce Blackney. And back with us today to, to finish up with our discussion on the remaining free agents, uh, we got John Matthews back in the building. What's up, y'all? Man, welcome back. So you have your top five free agents that are still available. Um, and a lot of these guys are really not bargain but bargain basement. I mean, these are mm -hmm. uh, these can be some major signings um, from this top five. But the first is Stefan Gilmore. We know he didn't play half of the year um, last year, but – He's, you know, two two years away from uh, six picks, um, 20 passes deflected, uh, full game seasons. Um, he has been one of the top corners since he's been in the league. Um, so why do you think Stefan Gilmore is one of the, the top free agents that's still out there? And what team you think will best use his 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 fit? Well, I think he's the best out there because at one time he was the best out there. I'm gonna, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. Not, okay. All right. Make sure everything. I'm sorry. Go back. Sorry about that. Um, he was the best out there. Um, when the Buffalo Bills drafted him, um, even when he went to New England, you can't mm -hmm. help injury. You can't help injury, right? Mm -hmm. If you put him on, and really, the teams he'll fit on any team in the league. That's what you rate. That's how you call the best. Like, what is a play? What is a player that could do that job? Any it don't matter. Three, four, four, three, nickel. He gonna check your he's gonna shut down or check the other team's best receiver. And that and when he before he was hurt, that's what he was good at. And so it's like I, I don't I think he's the top. He's the number one free agent. He's almost unbelievable that he's a free agent. Only because the money he demands. But I'm biased, like I said. I, I, I want him here. You know, I would take all the good players here if we can afford yeah. it. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's my biasness. That's my that's biasness. True. That's, that's the truth. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, Teron Armstead, man, he's a monster. Like, uh, he moves people. He moves. So he moves when he – they move when he moves. And especially mm -hmm. that Saints game um, when Kamara put up – what was that, f five touchdowns, I think? I mean, he was just dominating. My bad. He he was dominating that game, um, and but where where can he go now? Well, he's number two on my top five, and the reason he is once again he's another guy. That if you put him, not to repeat the same answer, but this is the proper answer. If you if you was to put that one player, he could fit on any team in the league because he he you could pretty much run any type of. Offense you want to run without the gun, power, whatever mm -hmm. you want to do, S mm -hmm. spread, pro style, anything you want. West Coast, East Coast don't matter. He he going he going he, he going he going he going he he's going to maul that dude in front of him. No matter who you got, he's got the quick enough feet. He's another player that you can pretty much put him anywhere, and he's going to be. That's how you rate these guys. You say. Not just a fit. How I rate guys, you're saying the best. They got to be the best. And it's like if he's the best at that, one of the fastest at that position and most athletic, and he's pretty doggone good. And the only reason, like, once again, he's a – it's a, it's what they, they call cap casualties for a reason. Yeah. Um, and that's what he is. He's a guy that they just can't afford because like, his market is what it is. And and these guys may have to wait because this draft has tackles in it. That, this draft has corners in it. So mm -hmm. it kind of is it, indicative to who is still out there and why these good players – I still out there. It's it's because age and money, but that's it. Um, no number three on your list. Um, Allen Ro Robinson. He's not only a deep threat, right? Like I, I I thought that he was just uh you know a guy that can get downfield, but he's an underneath guy too who can make plays. Mm -hmm. Um, you know he's a he's a post and end type 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 mm -hmm. guy. You know he could come across the middle. He can get extra yards. I mean he he's a playmaker. Um, where like I wanted him last year, but they they tagged him, of course, with the commanders. Mm -hmm. But that's another story. But but now, like I mean, I know a lot of teams like, but you know, he's like the best guy that's that's kind of out there. You know, depending on what type of type of player you're looking for. But where do you think, um, or what makes him special to you? Was well, just what you just said. Um, the fact that he's kind of what you would call an all-purpose receiver. Where he can okay. run them routes, 
He can run the underneath routes, but he can also take you over the middle, and he mm-hmm. can also take you deep. And he also has size. He also yeah. has. And he played who named the quarterbacks for the base when he was there? Name name the quarterback at Penn State. <laughs> the fact that he was that good with those schools, with that school and that co- and that and that team, lets you it's once again, that's an indicator of what he is. I mean, I I, I placed that list the way I did for a reason, because there's certain players like you alluded to in your own explanation that are good at doing everything a little bit. And really, no, you can't pair them up with a hall of a good quarterback. But for some reason, he's putting up yards and doing what he mm-hmm. got to do. And so it was hurt. like, and he was hey. hurt like last year. But I think he was like, yeah, I got this little ankle sprain. So yeah, I don't you got know. the blue flu. The blue yeah. flu I'm coming out there. You know, man, man, you're making me black and blue. I'm gonna be, yep. I'm gonna be sick. Ah, I got the blue yep. flu. I'm blue. I'm not playing with you. So I get it. I get it. Don't use my line there, people out there second great. But you got the blue flu. They call it the blue flu. But go ahead. Um, so I, I know number four is the honey badger, but I want I want to get to him last. So on record, number four is your is, is honey badger, but I want to get to him. I'm gonna do him last. So Juju Smith Schuster, um, he was kind of he was coming off the injury last year. I mean, he had about 16 catches um last year, but you know, he is a guy that can get you. Uh, 100 catches he can get you you know two three first downs a game um he's a good upper tier possession receiver um what why why juju on your list and not somebody like jarvis landry with juju smith schuster you got to factor in his age and what you saw when he went when he got in the league and where he was drafted at Mm -hmm. and what was expected of him but then what wound up coming to be of him um you can say where well, he was with Pittsburgh Steelers and Big Ben and all this other mess, but he lived up to it. He was like, what, a fifth, sixth round or some, some guy like, you know, uh, one of them late rounds, third day picks. Um, they wound up being like a prolific receiver, like, you know, in a, you know, catch. And he's, he was very, he's still very young. I think he was 25. So he got the, his, you know, he still got the rest of the time at him. Mean, he's, you can't, you can't help getting hurt in a, in a business that's 98% injury. Like, right. this is what it is. So it's like, I, I, that's like somebody knocking us for just making a simple administrative mistake, a simple administrative mistake at work, like shuffling something wrong or typing something, a typo. It happens. You do this enough, you're going to make a mistake. So I don't, I don't pain people out of that top five for the injuries or whatever the circumstances for stuff that they couldn't help. But what I did see was someone when when he was playing Juju Smith he was a good. Now you thought he was just a number two receiver, but he really is a number one. You know what I'm saying? He's a number one receiver guy that can once again do a little bit of everything over the middle, make the hard catches deep, and can kind of run routes pretty well. And so he benefited from playing with Big Ben. But most of those guys do well when they go to other teams for some reason. All of them did. Like when they left his free agents from Pittsburgh, they kind of had a. A, a, a better way, of, you know. They kind of showed you a- Antonio Brown being one guy, but before mm-hmm. him, you got a you got Plaxico Burris. You got a lot of people that came and went out of Pittsburgh. They wind up being good people, um, good players. I mean, good players for other teams. Yeah, um, with the exception of Randall L. You know, I mean, but that wasn't his fault. I mean, he just <laughs> he, he took the money and ran. That's different. But yeah. everybody, it's other people that we could talk. Mike Wallace, and to name a few, but it's a lot of guys. But he's on that same list of guys that can do a little bit of everything. Why is Honey Badger still a free agent? Money again, money. You can't money in a draft class. So if you notice the, the the trend, what's deep in this class, Dion? What we got? I know we got receivers. We got, I know they deep. We got receivers. We got mm-hmm. corners that are pretty quick, pretty yeah. big boys out there, and they fast. This is kind of they weird. taller. They get they get. Yes, yeah, so I said. I said you got some big boys that play corner now. They're six mm-hmm. two, six one, and they can hit, but run a four mm-hmm. three. So, right. so, so, and then you're looking at safety. What's the top 10 position this year? My boy out of Notre Dame. And there's another boy, he said, they're safeties. So why would you say, I'm going to pay you when I can just go try to get another one of these guys? You know, we saw what Carolina did when they drafted the boy, uh, what's his name? Got the Jeremy Chen. When we drafted, uh, you know what I'm saying? It was like, yeah, they got him in the second round. And it was like, yeah, he a good safety. So you don't, it's about money. Honey Badger showed not- the lead. And, and he's not listen, like ahead. he's not like a, a Buffalo nickel type guy. Either. He's only five no. now, like 170, something like that. So it's not like you can put him down in a box. You know, what I mean, the majority of his snaps. But I think sometimes for the shorter safeties, um, let me give you an example. What's my boy that played for the used to play for the, uh, the Seahawks before he got hurt? Earl and then Thomas. He gave, yep. 
So Earl was a guy, that, and then there's a couple other safeties in the league. Those those shorter safeties, you know, from playing ball or even doing anything, you can't see them. It's almost mm -hmm. a benefit. They come on a blitz, you don't see them. They come wrapping around and you they stunt in front of you. He just come and he we be lining at five nine. You six five. He took your legs out. But that's he, he that's makes most stop. and that's more so like a blitz though. But I'm talking about like and, if you actually even in coverage, they actually have him in the box as a like a uh like this is where he's gonna be. Like I think the honey badger moves a lot, so it's hard to kind of see where he is. But you think he's lining up there, it might be an issue, but I see what you're saying though about the small yeah, players. He's a Caesar. He has, I think, for him, for, for him and maybe a couple other guys, that doesn't from watching his career so far. Yeah, that's not yeah. if if right, if you build and if you build your team correctly, you should not. If you have if you're paying your linebackers the money they're supposed to pay in your D line, mm -hmm. where you want to the good safeties are the ones other than Ronnie Lott was the ones that got interceptions of like Ed Reed. That's what the new ones you remember. The right. guys that you're the one necessarily knocked the hell out of people, excuse me, knocked the heck out of people. Those it's the guys, the, the guys that got the ball and did the pretty play running it back. It's the NFL we in as a passing league. Mm -hmm. So I would say that that's that's you really want to defend the pass, is you know, but you don't want to defend the run too. But you, you have, the guy made it that far, he's too far. Like you know what I'm saying? If he's already eight, five to eight to ten yards of the field and your safety's getting to him anyway, he didn't got too many yards anyway. He should be yeah. tackling wide receivers. So I leave it there. That's why I say he's still on my he's gonna be on the list because he's once again a guy that gets paid. He's going to demand the money, but if you brought him to your team, you would kind of like speed up that, like you don't have to, what you what you gain in experience and everything else. You may deal with the fact of of, of durability, but you it's, say if your team is like right there, he's worth the what you you know he's worth the price. If you you know for a couple of years to win a Super Bowl, you just saw the Rams put a team together and win. Who's to say nobody? You know what I'm saying you don't if you like the Buffalo Bills or. Uh, the Ra the Raiders, um, and the NFC. If you um, can't say the Packers, can't say anybody. In, in, in the, the, the Washington Commanders, it's like now, nah. but we could <laughs> use. No, we could use them. You could. I'm just saying a team like that that could use them. But I'm saying we're not in contention yet to be the next team up. And it was hard to name it because the Seahawks kind of switched up, and then people are shifting in and out of here. So it's like I'm not going to ever say the the, the the C word on the radio. With the boys, <laughs> the cow, and forget they don't need nobody. That's why I was like a team that's right there. They just now, lost they Leo Collins too. They right, just lost that's good, good for them. L lose them, lose everybody. Just lose them. <laughs> I be mean, that's every every is good. That's good news to me. But yeah, yeah, but that's it. Any? Do you have any honorable mention uh, free agents that's still out there? Well, we got one today, and you may mention them, Cole Beasley. Um, and as much as now, he's a guy that's a specialty player. Special, but he's yep. special. But he's special. That slot receiver, that killing mm -hmm. route running on third down, you need five quick, he's going to get you seven. He's going to get you that first down. He's going to don't care if he can stretch it out. He, and that's another guy that's the honorable mention, but he's the guy that you can put. Yeah, every Who don't need that? Sure-handed, mm -hmm. route running, don't <laughs> do that, super smart, mm -hmm. and can play special teams for you. Yep. There you go. And he's a free, and that's the, you could you put anybody can use him, not just yeah. not just not just not just any. I was we should get him, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 got, he, 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 got, <laughs> he got he he got he got Patriots written all over him, yeah. But I wish he had this, you know, that W because it's like a lot of guys you just want your team, like I said, they had the best players, yeah, because you want to see a winner, man. We I'm getting grades over here, Dion, I mean, I got to get it, you know, what I'm yeah. I thought like right here, I thought this was like some some keep plugging. That's a long grade. See, starting to happen. Starting to happen. Starting yeah, to happen. man. We appreciate that, man. That's uh, that's John Matthews the second. That's Unc again joining us. We we appreciate you for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right, that's Ray's on the Lab podcast. One beat, one sound, one hot, one love. Thank you for listening to Red Zone in the Lab podcast. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Red Zone in the Lab. And you can download our podcast at Spotify, iTunes, and Podbean. And please visit our website at redzoneinthelab.com. Thank you.